So we took our bow saw and we sawed a small groove about three quarters of an inch deep all the way around our piece of spruce. And this gives us a good mallet, or some people call it a baton. I'm from the south, like things pretty simple, so I just call it a mallet. So we can use this to do a lot of different things with our knife, make a lot of different pieces, and we can make furniture. The things we can do with this, just having this out in the woods, is pretty much endless, and that's, that's pretty heavy. And that gives us, uh, like I said, it gives us a lot of options what we can so do with wood. So this is what we're gonna make, our fireboard and our spindle, or people call it a drill. This is what we're gonna to use to make it. So we're gonna take our knife and our mallet, and what we're gonna to try to do is I particularly like my fireboard to be somewhat near the center. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to get about a three quarter to a one inch piece out of the center of this. And then we'll take the scraps that we split off and we'll pick out what we think's the, the best wood, which I like to use a softer, more out toward the edge, free of knots for the drill or spindle. So we'll get started on that. That's not a bad looking piece. So the last thing we need is we need a socket. And you need something that's gonna be comfortable. And to me, that feels pretty comfortable. It'll be even better once I get the bark off of this. So we'll go ahead and get started on the rest of the whittling. So we've got our fireboard here. Like I said, when I come out into the woods, I always like to bring a wool blanket. Wool's uh, easy to dry out. Even wet, it still retains uh, you know, much of its insulation factors. But we'll go ahead and whittle this down. And we're gonna to try to get this, I'm gonna go for you know, something about a half inch, like a dowel shaped piece of wood. So we'll try to get it round and as smooth as we can get it. And we'll keep all of our scraps here on our blanket because we'll use that uh, when we go to build the fire too. Now, now that we've got our spindle, we need to do some carving on each end. One end we need to be long and pointy. And uh, we'll start tapering it out a pretty good little ways back. And this end here, the end that we'll use to actually make the fire We'll just basically put a, a bull nose in it or a chamfer all the way around. So we we'll get started on that. I like to come down about three eighths of an inch from the edge. If you can see that, and just start whittling her down. So I'm pretty happy with that. So there's our bullnose end. And on this end, we've got, you remember we've got those little knots. So we may have to use the mallet there or the baton. We may not. I like to have something hard to put it against so I can put some good pressure to it. So this spindle is pretty much ready. Uh, the only two things we're lacking to have this fire kit finished up is where we need a bow and then we need a socket and the socket will go here and that's what we'll use and we'll make a small hole down in our fireboard and this is how we'll hopefully achieve fire. So this is the piece we're going to use for a socket and again uh, there's nothing about making a friction fire this easy. It's uh, every bit of it's hard. Uh, it takes practice, uh, failure, things that you're going to have to try it and you're going to succeed and you're going to fail and in that you're going to learn what works and what doesn't. But uh, we're just going to carve a small, not very deep, because it's going that hole. They call this a drill for a reason. This is going to drill into this wood. What we don't want it to do, the reason that we have this narrow, is we do not want this to start shouldering into our socket and acting as a break. Because if it does, it's going to create more resistance up top. It's going to, if you, you know, a lot of times you may see it here when we go to do it that the spindle comes flying out of the bow. And a lot of times this results from the brake, this acting as a brake on the top of the spindle. So what we wanna do is we wanna get this hole up top. Like I said, deep is not an issue, but broad. We want the hole to be you know, wide. So we'll go ahead and widen that out a bit. And you know, as we're burning in, we may have to stop and go ahead and widen this out a little more because like I said, we do not want it breaking in 
on that. So that satisfies me for now. So in here, we're gonna have to make a starter hole for this spindle. And in this starter hole, it doesn't also need to be very deep. It needs to be about a quarter of an inch and we don't wanna make it bigger than the spindle. Uh, I like to make mine, everything is gonna be for you and what's comfortable to you. But I like to make mine about an inch from the edge on that side spindle, maybe three quarters from the edge to the center of the hole and about the same from the end. Gives us a good little bit flatter spot here to get started with. Alright. It's better to kind of get your knife in one place and spin your wood. You can see what you're doing a little better. So we've got our notch made in our fireboard. We've got us a socket made. So now I'm gonna make go get a piece of material for a drill, I mean for a bow. Uh, as far as the bow goes, uh, as you try to do this, you're gonna find a piece of wood that, that, a certain type of piece of wood, you may like a curved stick, you may want one with an elbow. I choose to get one with an elbow. It gives me a little bit more room away and lets me turn my wrist more in this fa fashion than it's so much as this. So. And it's all about, like I said, what you like. So I'm gonna go find a piece of material for this the bow. This is what I've chose for my bow. So, you know, just run your knife 90 degrees over, 90 degrees to the piece of wood, and just kind of get some of the stuff off here. I don't want to get this mixed up with any of my other material I've got here that I use for the fire because this is a green piece of wood and it is wet. So we're going to make this knot here good and tight. And on the other end, I've got just a small little notch there. Probably should be a little deeper than that. Just to keep my string from walking down when we're using it here to start a fire. I like about you know a couple inches of slack in it and you may have to adjust this somewhat so uh, one more thing that I did here is off of our fireboard I split another piece of wood here this is what we're going to catch our amber and our dust from when we start the friction fire That's what we're gonna use. 